Hello everyone, hope you are doing great. Uh, I'm Zara, I'm back, and in this video I want to talk about Part 3 Handbook Non-for-Profit Organizations. It's a very important topic, um, rarely tested, and uh, but easily can be tested in Day 3 specifically. And uh, in this video I want to talk about the important um, topics and progress that uh, when I was getting ready for the CP, I summarized them for myself, so I want to share it with you based on the previous exams, not CP, uh, because I haven't seen um, this topic in CP only one day three, I guess. Mm -hmm. But before that, it was in the um, at university when I was passing the financial reporting courses. I was um, getting ready for that one, and um, I went through the handbook more than it's needed. That's why you're gonna see more paragraphs um, in this video. So, if I want to explain that what is a non-for-profit organization. It's really important to understand um, the meaning of it. Non-for-profit organization is a company that doesn't have the purpose or goal to make profit or doing a business like for-profit organization. And mostly they want to help people in different fields, charity or health, education, social or this kind of things. And there's no shareholder in these types of um, companies. So you won't see the equity statement like any other for-profit organizations that we see. Instead of that, they have something else, but not as called um, equity statement or something like that. Uh, but um, because there's no shareholder, um, so the terminology is gonna be a bit different. Here's important topics in this video that I, uh, that I want to cover it. Um, inventories uh, held by a non-for-profit organization, reporting employee uh, future benefits. This is a topic never ever has been tested. Um, I've never seen, but just in case, if you want to read it just by, by yourself, because I didn't go through it in this video. Um, if you want to um, just read it by yourself it is in section 3463 but if you don't want to spend time or you don't have time it is okay just make sure if you see a case that it is a non-for-profit organization but it's talking about employees benefit or something like that it is in this section 3463 you will go there and then um, just with a quick search you will find a proper paragraphs or just by guessing you can copy and paste and do some analysis and at least get kind of mark in it instead of putting this blank the other part is contributions revenue recognition and contributions receivable it's another important topic tangible capital asset intangible assets and collections held by nfpo so let's go Okay, here is inventories held by a non-for-profit organization. The contributions of materials and services. When a non-for-profit organization recognizes contribution of material and services, make sure to be careful. <laughs> the cost of inventories shall reflect the amount of recorded contribution in accordance with contribution and revenue recognition in this section. That I will explain it in this video um 44 um, 10 is a very important section that we are going to talk about it the other thing is in paragraph 5 inventory is to be distribu distributed uh, at no charge or for a nominal um, charge nominal charge means putting zero dollar um, or uh, putting one dollar but the purpose is just present that specific item in the financial statements. And the user of financial statement will see that, oh, this company has these resources or these costs, but they don't have the um, proper value of it. And they put um, $1 or even um, 0 0.001, just something there. Um, in this case, the distribution at no charge or for a nominal um, charge or consumption in the production process of goods 
to be distributed at no charge or for um, a nominal charge. The consumption in the production, I want to briefly explain about it. For example, imagine a food bank that receives, for example, vegetables, meat, or um, other things, ingredients, and then they want to make a food for, because it's a food bank and it's a kind of charity, they want to help people. Um, this is a consumption in the production, but whenever they receive these items from different grocery stores or even from people, they will put something there in their financial statements um, as a lump sum account uh, and the amount of it is going to be no charge zero or a nominal charge for example one dollar uh, or something like this but for the presentation purposes they do it um, in most cases uh, the other section of the handbook 44 um, 10 contributions and revenue recognition definitely i'm pretty sure you've seen these um, items before it's important and there are two different methods for the revenue recognition for NFPO. One of them is deferral method and the other one is restricted uh, font method. I'm going to talk about these two items. But uh, when you want to analyze which method is going to be more beneficial for the company or, your, or for your client um, or anyone you are um, helping them, um, you have to consider the best interest of your client um, in order to see at that specific time deferral method is going to be beneficial for them or restricted font method because I will explain to you in the next slides that um, what is going to be the difference uh, of these two and how you can find easily related parts of these two in the handbook because when you open the handbook section 44 um, 10 of NFPO. There are lots of different paragraphs that I got confused I myself, but um, I will show you how to um, tackle it and deal it with it. In paragraph 16, contributed materials and services. This is a very, very, very important uh, paragraph, and I want you um, make sure you know where this paragraph is located because it's talking about the organization that wants to recognize um, the material and services as a contribution in the um, company. So if they want to recognize uh, materials and services that they have received as contribution, they should do so only when a fair value can be reasonably estimated. This is number one. Number two, and when the materials and services are used in the normal course of the organization's operations. And number three, would otherwise have been purchased. What does it mean? Let's briefly explain about this part. Okay, the first part is really easy. It can be reasonably estimated the fair value of the item. Um, so you can analyze it if it can be estimated. For example, by comparing, if you are receiving something for a hospital, you can compare the value of it, um, similar items with the other hospitals, for example. And when materials and services are used in the normal course of um, the uh, organization's operations, for example, imagine the food bank, previous example, they are receiving the ingredients to make food for uh, people. And, um, but for example, they received um, TV or they received something else which is not related to the um, normal course of the operation of that um, NFPO. If it is not related, then company cannot recognize it um, as, for example, contribution. But at the very rare case, it's going to be kind of professional judgment if you want to say, OK, this company or food bank has received a TV. This TV is going to be used for people when they are eating food um, and then they can watch TV and enjoy. You have to see what is the purpose or what is the goal of that NFPO. If their goal is to uh, make people happy, for example, when they are eating food and um, kind of providing some joys or um, some happy hours for them, maybe. So it is very um, tricky in these cases, but in usual um, cases, it's not going to be recognized as, um, for example, um, 
contribution of or for example if they receive for example um, flip-flops imagine or um, swimsuits um, definitely for a food bank it's not related to the main purpose of the food bank and it cannot be recognized as um, contribution in that case and otherwise have been purchased this is the third part this this paragraph has three important sections make sure to understand it properly and have been purchased what does it mean for example again food bank food bank needs uh, vegetable meat and uh, I don't know bread these kind of things uh, because they are making food for people if uh, they have not received it they should go and buy it for example from Loblaws or any uh, I don't know other grocery stores or someone else they have to buy it if they don't receive it they have to buy it so it means that they really need that it's their main purpose of operation so again it's a very important paragraph and the other paragraph paragraph 19 measurement contributions should be measured at fair value at the date of contribution if fair value can be reasonably estimated okay here are the um, items that i wanted to um, explain decision tree number one and the next slide is going to be decision tree number two i just want to explain one of them here is a deferral method by deferral method what do we mean generally speaking we want to defer whatever that is not occurring in the current period so for example if you have a restricted um, contribution but it should be used for example in next period you cannot recognize it as um, contribution in the current period and you have to defer it but in this uh, decision tree and the next slide decision tree number two which is going to be other method you um, can see below each part of it uh, for example for endowment um, contribution you will see it, okay it's going to be recognized as direct increase in the net asset and it's written in the paragraph 4410.29 so do not memorize this number of uh, paragraphs you can directly go to these trees and then see what's going to happen what's the situation in which type of um, category um, you can uh, categorize that specific contribution and what how it's going to be recognized in the financial statements and copy and paste that a specific part of the um, handbook or paragraph it's going to be really easy just know that these trees are in section 4410 of part 3 of the handbook just make sure you know that if I go to the next slide it's going to be decision number two and based on the um, uh, case facts um, you will um, kind of advise the client which method is going to be more beneficial for them if for example they want to present more revenue in the current period to get that a specific loan or something like this as long as, as, long as it is legal uh, and based on the case facts um, so um, you can uh, advise them um, to have a better um, option for the current period uh, without any um, negative impact in the future uh, periods and section 4420 contributions receivable in the recognition um, contribution receivable so the company has not received it yet it should be recognized as an asset when it meets the following criteria both of them the amount uh, to be received can be reasonably estimated and ultimate collection is reasonably assured by reasonably assured me I mean they should um, be ensured that um, this amount is going to be received they are able to collect it and usually it happens by a piece of document um, that there is an assurance and there is guarantee uh, not only a promise a written promise a document specifically for the audit purposes we need documents for it and it should be mentioned in the case if you want to repair it and always make sure using case facts in these kind of things things and the other part which um, just in case if you want to deeply analyze the 
every part of the uh, financial reporting, make sure to um, touch a bit about the disclosure of it. Um, so, and for example, here, um, here um, the amount recognized as an asset. For example, the dollar, dollar value is this one recognized as an asset. And then at the reporting date, December 31st, something like this, or the amount recognized as revenue in this period for this value uh, because of this. Uh, this is going to be your note disclosures in the um, analysis. Uh, but to be honest, I haven't seen note disclosure. Just keep in mind, if you have extra time, um, consider it in your uh, analysis, especially in day two, in day three, you don't have time to do it. But in day two, because it's going to be your perfect day, you have to analyze it very deeply to get the mark. Just consider it as um, something that you should analyze it. And 4433 tangible capital asset, I'm pretty sure you've seen this topic, the rule for $500,000. If the um, current and preceding period of the organization, the annual revenue is less than this amount, then the um, tangible capital asset that company received can be um, recognized as cost. But other than that, if the company fails to meet this condition, it's going to be um, capitalized. And then um, if, for example, in the subsequent uh, period uh, or next period, it is again less than 500k they never ever can go back and fix the, pre the um, uh, previous uh, recognition or even from um, that time they cannot recognize anything in the um, cost recognition and measurement the cost here is another topic which should be considered and it's very important here and um, for a contributed tangible asset cost is deemed to be fair value at the date of the recognition um, sometimes not sometimes in most of the cases for the nfpo it's really difficult and costly to recognize the fair value of the items and assets because um, they have very limited resources and they don't want to spend money on it because normally they don't have it they don't have money for that an intangible asset in section 4434 um, there is a definition of it and of course the write down i've never seen anything on this topic just keep in mind if you see something as intangible asset um, for nfpo in your exam this is in this section and it's very um, short um, section of the handbook of part three of the handbook and collections um, again recognition and measurement is going to be um, at cost or nominal value um, if the cost is not uh, possible to recognize the cost of it it can be recorded at nominal value one dollar or 0 0.01 0 0.1 something like this just for the presentation purposes um, for the users to show them that we had this item and um, yeah these are all the items that i um, studied for my exam and i know that it's more than enough for you uh, but pause the video um, go through these topics and make um, sure you are familiar with these um, paragraphs that's why i copy and pasted from the handbook directly to make sure it a kind of um, memorization in your mind or look familiar when you go to the handbook you will see something similar in the handbook and um, you can use it um, quickly you can find it quickly in the handbook in the exam specifically in the CV because um, the stress management and time management is not easy in that in that exam hope you like this video um, if you liked it please um, like it and then, um, of course, uh, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done already. I really appreciate your help, your comments, your support. It's going to be uh, a lot for me and it's going to be a kind of motivation for me also to make more videos and uh, make better videos. 
Um, hope you enjoyed and learned from this video. If there is anything that I missed I or I made a mistake, let me know below in the comments. I'm going to be more than happy to um, chat you and then um, correct my uh, mistakes and learn from you guys. Thanks for watching and uh, see you soon.